it seems just about every car manufacturer worth its salt is throwing its hat into the small SUV ring, but few are more experienced at building them than Suzuki. This time around, Suzuki has taken the small part to the extreme, the Agnes is just 3.7 meters long and 1.7 meters wide. It's so small, in fact, that it's about the same size as the Volkswagen Up and Kia Picanto City cars. However, with its flared arches, bluff nose and jacked up stance, there's no mistaking it for anything other than a radically designed and eye-catching baby just one engine is available, Suzuki's 89 bhp 1.2 liter petrol unit, which has the further option of a more fuel-efficient mild hybrid version that was previously seen in the bar there are four trims to choose from, SZ3, SZT, SZ5 and Adventure, the latter being an SZT with an enhanced styling package. Read on to find out which gets our vote and if we think the Ignis is worth considering over other similar priced small SUVs, such as the Dacia Duster. And if you do want an Ignis, head over to our new car deals page, where you could find a good saving at a nearby dealer. Lino Hatchback. And to prove its SUV worthiness, you can also opt for four-wheel drive. SUV. The 1.2 dual jet's 89 bhp may sound modest, but the Agni certainly doesn't feel lacking in power. We managed a very respectable 10.0 seconds in the 0 to 60 miles per hour sprint, that's better than a 1.0 litre Kia Picanto or any day Duster could manage. And the 88 pounds foot of torque offers enough in gears up to accelerate you ably from a low revs, meaning you don't have to change gear all the time. When you do use the Ignis's 5-speed manual gearbox, it is precise enough to make the whole experience rather enjoyable. We'd stick with that combination for private buyers. While the more expensive 1.2 dual jet hybrid provides a bit more go, it's only fractional. We have yet to try the optional 5-speed auto gearbox, but the cheaper manual is sweet enough that most won't mind changing their own gears. Other areas of the Ignis are less accomplished. Take the braking performance, where it took 8.3 meters farther to stop from 70 miles per hour than a Kia Picanto X line. And the steering is inconsistently weighted, tending not to self center at town speeds, plus, you get pronounced kickback over sharp ridges and bends. There's also much more body roll than you'd get in the best handling city cars such as the Picanto, which includes the higher riding Picanto X-Line, and Volkswagen Up, but it certainly feels more agile than the Duster. Still, the Agnes's low weight and compact dimensions help it at least feel semi-agile, and grip levels are reasonable, provided you're not trying to drive the wheels off it. Its real trump card, though, is that you can option four-wheel drive so that the Ignis can go off-road. Okay, Suzuki's Algrip technology, should you specify it, is designed to help the Ignis cross muddy fields rather than traverse mountain ranges, but the fact that this is available in such a small car is impressive, as is the fact that you get proper SUV gizmos such as hill descent control. How does it ride? Well, the Agnes's soft suspension setup translates in part to a comfortable ride, acting as a decent cushion over wavy dips and crests. But that's tinged by constant fidgeting over scruffy town roads and a thwack reverberating through the body if you stumble across a razor-edged pothole. Refinement on the move is a mixed bag. The Agnes's engine is a gem, always audible but never coarse, emitting a pleasantly sugar-coated note even when thrashed. Road noise at 70 miles per hour is apparent, but it's the wind noise gusting around the windscreen pillars and door mirrors that's most irksome on a prolonged jaunt along the motorway. Oh yes, and despite not stopping you well from high speeds, the brakes feels overly sharp and hard to modulate around town. The roominess of the Agnes depends on how you perceive it. Strictly speaking, it's a small SUV by which measure it's unremarkable and no match for the Dacia Duster. However, many people will look at the Dinky Ignis as an alternative to a city car, and by that barometer it's big. The Ignis does something quite incredible given its tiny dimensions, it seats four adults in decent comfort. 
few small SUVs are able to do such a thing, let alone city cars. Going for the entry-level SZ3 trim gets you five seats, but in truth you'll struggle to get five adults aboard due to the narrowness of the rear bench. So our suggestion is to opt for SZ T trim. This comes with four seats only, but the two in the rear gain the ability to individually tilt for comfort and slide backwards and forward to prioritize boot space or legroom as required. Behind the rear seats sits a decently proportioned boot that's much bigger than the average city cars. Be warned that, due to the space required for fitting the four-wheel drive gubbins, the boot of Algrip versions ends up being 20% smaller than that of standard cars. In all cases, access to the boot is good, but there is quite a pronounced lip to lift luggage over and a step in the extended floor when you fold the rear seats down. Incidentally, these seats split 60-40 in SZ3 models, while in all other versions they are split 50-50. The roominess of the Agnes depends on how you perceive it. Strictly speaking, it's a small SUV, by which measure it's unremarkable and a Dacer Duster significantly dwarves it. However, many people will look at the Dinky Agnes as an alternative to a city car and, by that barometer, it's big. The Agnes does something quite incredible given its tiny dimensions, it seats four adults in decent comfort. Few small SUVs are able to do such a thing, let alone city cars. Going for the entry-level SZ3 trim gets you five seats, but in truth you'll struggle to get five adults on board due to the narrowness of the rear bench. So our suggestion is to opt for SZ T trim. This comes with four seats only but the two in the rear gain the ability to individually tilt for comfort and slide backwards and forward to prioritize boot space or legroom as required. Behind the rear seats sits a decently proportioned boot that's much bigger than the average city car's drunk. Be warned that, due to the space required for fitting the four-wheel drive gubbins, the boot of Algrip versions ends up being 20% smaller than that of standard cars. In all cases, access to the boot is good, but there is quite a pronounced lip to lift luggage over and a step in the extended floor when you fold the rear seats down. Incidentally, in SZ3 models these seats split 60-40, while in all other versions they are split 50-50. There's very little difference in the list price and PCP finance deals of like for like Ignis, Volkswagen up, Kia Picanto and High and i10 models. But in our favorite SZT trim the Ignis is fractionally cheaper as a cash buy. A diesel Dacer Duster is available for around the same price, offering much more space. The Ignis Algrip model's closest rival, the Fiat Panda 4x4, is quite a bit pricier, while a four-wheel drive duster with a diesel engine is also more expensive than the Ignis Algrip. Our fuel economy testing on and on hybrid front-wheel drive Ignis produced a real-world average of 50.9 miles per gallon, not quite the official figure of 61.4 miles per gallon but still pretty good. The hybrid, on the other hand, produced a real-world average of 59.6 miles per gallon, making it the most economical car we've ever tested. That's no small feat dot and the good news doesn't stop there. Comparatively good CO2 emissions help to keep company car tax palatable, while resale values are predicted to be strong by city car standards. However, servicing and insurance costs are relatively high when considered alongside smaller city cars. SZT is the best-selling trim, and it's easy to see why. It adds 16 in wheels, a rear-view camera and the clever sliding rear seats to the entry-level SZ3 model's front electric windows, DAB radio, Bluetooth, four-speaker stereo and air conditioning. All in all, it represents the best value in the range, and if you wish to add a few distinguishing features, there's also the adventure styling package. That said, going for SZ5 gets you standard automatic emergency braking AEB pushing the Ignis's own cap score to the maximum 5 stars. On models without EB, that rating drops to 3. You can add EB as an option to lesser trims, though, but it is expensive.
Unfortunately, no reliability data is yet available for the Ignis. However, Suzuki performed brilliantly in our most recent reliability survey, coming forth out of 32 manufacturers tested. All versions come with an immobilizer and security deadlock on the doors.